Hi, thank you for tuning in to the Finding Harmony podcast with me, your host, Harmony Slater. Hi, welcome to the Finding Harmony podcast. I'm your host, Harmony. I am here today with Russell Case. Harmony, I have an introduction for you for today's guest. Okay. I'm so excited <laughs> from the nation of Brazil, currently teaching in Palma, yeah. Mallorca, founder of Ashtanga Pitango in Sao Paulo, the wonderful Hel- Helen Rosenthal. Helena. Helen Rosenthal. What kind of... <laughs> you're, a, you're a Jew like me. You must be. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Elena, let's put Helen it like Rosenthal. that. Elena Rosenthal. Elena Rosenthal. <laughs> Elena Rosenthal. I don't even recognize Rosenthal. that as a Jewish name. Rosenthal. What is that? Elena Rosenthal. Rosenthal is, yeah, Rosenthal um. is, is very popular. We find them all over. Oh my Somebody's goodness. Somebody's always asking me, oh, do you know her? Do you know her? And then yeah. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> you must be one of those refugees from Europe or something. Yes, I am. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <But> I was... <laughs> But I was taken to Brazil. So like, you know, most yeah. white people are also refugees from Europe. If you meet them around <laughs> North America, <laughs> South America, mm-hmm. they're Some all point. refugees. They all got on a boat and fled yeah. starvation yes. and abuse. Is that yes. that's what happened with you guys? Well, my family is from all over. My grandfather uh, came from Paris and he was born in France. Wow. My grandma from Russia. The other grandma mm-hmm. from um, Bessarabia, who used to see, was to be Bessarabia before. Okay. Romania, mm-hmm. the other one. So it's this mixture of Jewish coming from yeah. Europe some... that ended up there. in Brazil. Some yes. Ro- Roma in there from Romania? Or yeah. No? Verona. Yeah. My mom is Verona. Oh, Ver- Verona. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, so in, in Russia, they're they're fleeing the the pogroms where they were um, exterminating Jews as well. Is that maybe it's something to do with that as well? Yeah, I didn't get that deep into into, <laughs> into the the <laughs> history. <laughs> no, I I was um I was I went into some crazy thing. There's a new movie coming out. Kate Winslet, who is from Titanic. Yes, you remember yeah. her. She's uh-huh. making this film about um, um, Miller, May, I think May, oh, I forgot the name, but it's a famous uh, photographer mm-hmm. from the war and she took a bath in Hitler's bathtub the d- the day that Hitler committed suicide. Really? So Kate Winslet is doing a, um, a, bio, a biopic of this lady. <laughs> and uh, she did this wonderful uh, photography of... Um, the the president of Hungary being um, uh, assassinated, not assassinated, but uh, the firing squad. Oh, uh, executed. Executed, yeah. And I was so excited to see the president of Hungary being executed because, of course, all, all my family was was uh, executed in Hungary like as after well. World War Two. Oh, during mm-hmm. during World War Two, but um, this was after. Yeah. Anyway, that's by and by. I'm sorry, yeah. that goes no, off. I needed to hear <laughs> yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the beautiful introduction. Here we go. Yes, the beautiful introduction. Let's return. <laughs> oh. Wow. So you hmm. you were growing up in Sao Paulo, is that right? Yes, until I was thirty three, I was living 33. in Sao Paulo. Mm-hmm. You said that uh, your father was, uh, I think, um, uh, an advertising man, an ad man. Your mother was a psychologist. Yes. They are pretty um, much like the brain and the, and the heart and the emotions left and, and right. Heart, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Because totally. he was very rational and logical and she was so emotional and and worried all the time <laughs> oh. oh you the psychologist yeah. was emotional and worried all the time yeah. wow jewish moms you know you can't oh, run I do. away from this <laughs> i do root. know jewish moms pretty well um so you're the perfect blend of the logic and the emotion uh, i do my best i do yoga <laughs> i do not the shoulder and i try to get there <laughs> that's right that's right so i also everything i also blend it first I also divorced an anxious psychologist. So I know your <laughs> your you and your 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 parents sort of struggled. Is is that right? With 
how well your parents Sorry. divorced when you were four and i wonder yeah, if yeah. he was an anxious yeah. psychologist like was, the woman was... i divorced <laughs> well Again. i mean my, my parents are wonderful and I'm, I'm yeah i love them so very much and they've been a, a big support in my life but yes uh, when i was around five years old they were divorcing and mm -hmm. uh it was it was complicated there was a lot of fights there was a lot of arguments um and it was a turbulent time in our lives mm -hmm. but i was the smaller one i have two older sisters so mm -hmm. For them, I guess it was a bit harder, and especially one of them later has some psychological issues that was very hard for us to go through, and that lasted a few years with a lot of apprehension and concern about her. So it wasn't an easy and smooth adolescence for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's it's yeah. interesting that you said that you found that maybe your sister had a harder time when when you actually described your own adolescence as being quite rough. I mean, you hmm. really you you I think you described in your bio as you kind of went off the rails a little bit. Yeah, I mean, those things they affect all of us, you know, when you when you're dealing so close to it. it. Of course, it affects all of us, but in a very different way. I mean, I was very, I was always very passionate about life, very full of desires and curiosities and driven, you know, to to discover, and also at the same time with a deep insatisfaction, with a deep inquiry since young. Mm -hmm. And my mother, she used to have a library full of books. And then since the young age, I took her books from Krishnamurti and some Buddhist books. And I was reading it and resonating with it quite a lot. Um, I remember when I was 12 years old and I did my bat mitzvah, a friend oh. of mine gave me a Shiva statue. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And that means my present, yeah. you know, she, she, yeah. found, uh, she found it cute because I know she shouldn't have any idea about it. Yeah. So uh, somehow, you know, I was always uh, inquiring and, and searching yeah. and, but with this deep insatisfaction, searching for a deeper meaning and mm -hmm. just feeling that, you know, just playing the rules and that game of the daily life wasn't enough and wasn't the there was more to it than what I see and I wanted to find out what it is. Mm. Yeah. And I think you you started like experimenting with drug use and kind of going down that path too, which I think is also very, very um common for seekers, like people who are yeah. at that stage or in, in that place in life where they're recognizing like there's got there's more to this and what's this really mm -hmm. about and I think that's a real questioning stage um but did it turn like I mean there's experimentation but then there's like really going into a dark place is is that somewhere that you yeah. went I thought I think I was very close to this dark place a few times but it was like it was more as an exploration and I was very intense. So I am areas with areas as is an ascendant. There's a lot of fire in my side. I, I'm I'm not really into astrology, but I know that I have this intensity, you know, <laughs> that is yeah. present and I can't escape from it from it. But yoga has helped me a lot. Uh, but so I would go, you know, until the end. If I was smoking weed, I was the one who was smoked the most. And if I was partying, <laughs> I would party until the, the security would turn on the lights and say, go home, take rest. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was very intense. And I think, you know, this was, was, was presented to me by that time. So I had the quest. I had the desire to know more. And this was the path that was presented to me when I was young. So I got into this door and I started looking around. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I went, I, I, I got into a few situations where it was a bit too dangerous, where I needed to ask for forgiveness, you know, because I thought I was going to die. Uh, um, yeah. And um, like literally. Yeah, I mean, I have used cocaine for the whole night and then in the morning I was in my bed struggling to sleep and I was in a state that I I, I remember kneeling on the floor and talking to the television uh, that I, I 
I, I needed another chance. I wanted another chance, you know. So you know, I got to some extremes that um, I thought there's nothing else to see in this way, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and it was at this moment that my grandfather passed away. Mm -hmm. And I saw that or I, someone very near and dear to me died. Mm -hmm. And that was a big shake. There was a mm -hmm. big shake up in my life because I started thinking about our um, vulnerability, that my life, I was, I was playing with the gift of life as it was a draft and I was mm -hmm. not honoring the gift mm -hmm. of life. I mean, something very profound and simple started to shift when he passed away. I remember I was, I took a Heike course and I had a, a, a mouth piercing in my tongue and I yeah. took it off and I gave it to my, to my master. And I said, I don't need this anymore. Ah, so a lot of things. Reiki, the, the Japanese yeah. Uh, yeah. massage therapy. Well, no, it's like healing. It's not it's a like massage. It's yeah. like a not ener touching. Yeah, like energy healing, energy touch. Exactly. It's more as a bit like a Shakti bath that you do yeah. in this uh, Japanese lineage of uh, mm. Mikao Usui. Yeah. And, I, did, um, I did this also. Mm -hmm. At when oh, yeah. when I when I first started into yoga, I also was studying Reiki, mm -hmm. but I don't practice. <laughs> but one day, I maybe it will come back to me. Mm -hmm. I think it was so very was... popular at one point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's and it's very beautiful, and, and, yeah, and of is. course. But anyway, um, I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to smoke a lot of weed, and then I was experimenting with ecstasy and everything, but. It was until I was 19 and I went to an ayahuasca ritual in Brazil oh, yeah. that I quitted everything. Oh, wow. Like very naturally, mm -hmm. effortlessly, because I realized that I was being very irresponsible in the way I was mm -hmm. altering my state of consciousness and that this was actually a teacher. Those oh. plans... They could be masters and they could be um, a teacher to my evolution and not to my numbness, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I was That's wasting an opportunity. So yeah. things started to, to, to change very kind of organically. It wasn't a decision, but I, mm -hmm. I, I saw another aspect of those psychedelics that I didn't know before. Yeah. And somehow that connected to my search. It's so it's so fascinating. We've had a couple of guests on the show talk about the movements in Brazil for um, a kind of uh, structured uh, plan for what to deal, how to deal with uh, spiritual experiences, spiritual awakening, Kundalini awakening. It seems much more advanced and uh, progressive in Brazil for this sort of thing. I wonder if you could talk to us more about ayahuasca. We, you know, we hear a lot about it in the states. Famously, the the famous quarterback Aaron Rodgers went and did an ayahuasca ceremony, so everyone is talking about it. It was probably the first time to hear about it in pop culture. No, no, mm. Gwyneth Paltrow did a whole... Didn't hear about it. Well, so yeah, you know, Sting, no, Sting no, I follow the news. You know? I follow the news, though. And so in the news, it's not being mm -hmm. talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, when Aaron Rodgers did it, it was like, wow, this is crazy. Mm. I wonder if you could tell our listeners more about the experience, what led you to want to try it, and what did you actually see, like... Like when you get stoned, maybe you'll see some rainbows and things, you know, things start to feel a little, you know, wobbly. But then there's, you know, like a full trip when you're in a completely different planet. Like what's the, where are you on the spectrum there? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how to put the, the right words in English, but the thing is that ayahuasca is not an hallucinogenic. It is an mm. entheogenal. I say, I, well, it, um, the the word in in Portuguese is entheogeno, mm. and that means it's not gonna bring up some images that you project outside, but mm. it's gonna bring a lot of mm, 
I mean, I can, let's say about my experience, everything that I was hiding under the rug would come up and it was in front mm. of me so clearly that there's no way I could deny it. And I saw all the light and all the shadows in the same proportion and I could feel it and I could see it. And at the same time, all the flaws in the world and everything that I, I dislike, I realized they were inside of me as well, mm-hmm. that I am that as well. And that I needed a practice. This insight was came to me and I had an image of a speed trail like um you know when you're running and you're running in circles what is the name of this space yeah like a track or something track yeah 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 so it came like an image of a running track in Mm -hmm. circles in a sense that I needed to content I need to to not to run through the whole Mm -hmm. city to contain exactly I needed a container to Mm -hmm. do a practice and experiment in there so I could slowly, gradually, with a method, build up and purify what I needed to be purified. And when I started to practice Ashtanga, I was 19 years old, um, I cried a lot during my practice. I remember I sweat crazily and mm. I was crying so much in the practices. Part of it is because the teacher back then was very intense. He was a person with a strong um, character and the, the way he practiced was full of heat and tapas and, and uh, pressure on us. But mm. part of it was that I, I was bringing up those memories and suppressed emotions that I lived and I had no one to talk about. I didn't do any therapy or any psychological therapy to, to digest and to process what I lived in those years. So the practice was my therapy. And over the years, I could organize everything inside of me. And what happened is I, I did a few sessions of ayahuasca when I was 19, and I decided not to do it again because I saw people using it as another escapism. You know, mm-hmm. they were doing rituals every weekend or every month. Then there was like a psychological dependency on this. And mm-hmm. it became just like anything else. I, like, I just want to 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 back you up just to, to back up just a moment. I know you wanted to talk about your first Ashtanga teacher, Kristovan. And I think that's what you're referring to. Yeah. 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 But I just wanted to back up. So you're in... You, You've been in. Were you invited to an ayahuasca ceremony? Mm. A friend, or did you hear yeah. about it? Yeah, a friend. By that time, and- I was doing some movement classes, Klaus Vienna, Feldenkrais thing. Yeah, I was mm, studying yeah. at the university for body and arts communication, which is a course mm. that we had in Brazil that works with performance, art, and dance simultaneously. Um, And I started with dance and then I moved to performance and then I started to take those classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, one of my friends or my colleagues in their classes, she was, she was doing those rituals and hosting them in her house with a a leader. And there was a lot of actors participating in it. And there was like a singing book that they would follow that bring up the messages and they kind of guide you through so i went there and by that time i had no practice so it was very strong physically i couldn't bear i couldn't (laughs) not even even be seated still you know because it was too much so after i took a lot of years of practice i went back to those rituals after breaking up with a very complicated relationship and at that moment I was 23 and I decided to go back to the ayahuasca but I had practices consistently and it was a completely different experience I was able to sit in Padmasana for like 10 hours just watching watching all those things coming up and and breathing and not you know with some equanimity into the things that I was presented Oh, yeah. So you're in a you're in a friend's house. Yeah. Are you like sitting in a circle, in a yeah. kind of on the floor, 
-hmm. and when you you describe your physical state you are sitting mm -hmm. and you're not exactly in a different world but you're aware of uh very clearly the mm -hmm. light and dark elements of your personality and they seem very present to you but yeah. it's not that uh, you are disappeared from the room you're seeing the floor still you're seeing your own legs and hands still absolutely yes absolutely okay. and okay. and uh, and sometimes i i would do some asanas or some mudras mm -hmm. you know that would come like spontaneously and mm -hmm. and it's actually wonderful i have no words to describe how beautiful it is when you combine those things, this is something I, I'm still longing to experiment in the future, like mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's really powerful. But of course, it is so important that you have a safe environment and someone leading that you trust and that is knowledgeable. I mean, it, it, that makes a whole difference. So mm -hmm. I was with them for for a while in a few rituals, but the limit or the boundaries between the theater thing that felt a bit like an actuation, like they were playing, uh, uh, or the real ritual, it was a bit confusing. They were crossing a bit the lines, and sometimes they were doing some, some show-ups that I didn't feel comfortable about, so I left that group. And then a few years later, I met a shaman. Mm -hmm. And this shaman, uh, he does it in the most beautiful way, and is somebody that I really respect and honor, and He's a very nice teacher that we have there in Brazil. So I started, you know, consecrating ayahuasca with him. Uh, and I, I do every time I have the opportunity, which um, lately not many, but if I could, <laughs> I would go every time, every solstice, you know, every time the solstice. the season change, I would, I would go if I had the chance because, yeah, it's a teacher. Honestly, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's a mirror, it's a very potent mirror, because as you guys know, we can easily fall into the trap in the Ashtanga practice as well and keep on increasing our conditionings instead of releasing that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's very, it's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that is fascinating. I, um, uh, I think our experiences were much more... Um, uh, intuitive and spontaneous rather than controlled. Uh, and so there were, there's much, there's an element of chaos there for, for Harmony and I, when we were, um, we didn't do ayahuasca. No, no, but, um, <laughs> we were severely, um, huh? uh, uh, hallucinating. Um, <laughs> so I wonder if you could talk then you, you mentioned your, your first Ashtanga yoga practice is being very intense. You're crying a lot. You're you're clearly having a kind of somatic release to yes. your own traumas through your body. Mm -hmm. But yes. I think you you mentioned and you said that you wanted to talk about this, but um, that this that this teacher or perhaps this room was also maybe uh, re-traumatizing or a, a kind of um, abusive in its own right. We're, Mm. were you able to but it sounds like you're able to get something out of it maybe i'm absolutely no it, it was it was life-saving to me it, to me that mm. served the moment i was because mm. i was very undisciplined i had a lot of trouble with stability routine you know going mm. all to the same place and at the same time i always hated that and mm -hmm. and I was yeah and I was very as well like uh, stubborn <laughs> so yeah. I, I have difficulty in surrendering to whatever and he taught me so much of discipline and the group and that sangha that those people they mm -hmm. they were so dedicated and so committed and so true to the practice that we created a bond that was very beautiful mm -hmm. um but also, yeah, there was a lot of purification indeed because we were doing strong, strong practices. But yeah, too strong. And this guy ended up being very manipulative. He ended up um, getting lost in the power, uh, power mm -hmm. structure and mm -hmm. abusing, abusing in many ways, not just sexually from other people that unfortunately I've heard after I left the institution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also emotional abuse, psychological abuse, you know, because uh, despite being a, a yoga nasana teacher, nasana teacher, let's put it this way, he called himself an uh, Ayurveda therapist. 
So he was doing what he called Ayurveda massages and he would pick up the persons who, the ladies who were ready. Uh, yeah, groomed. To, yeah. So, you know, yeah. when you get there, he locks the door and and you were naked. So with me, it was actually, it's actually beautiful because I was protected by my ingenuity because I I didn't buy whatever he could suggest, you know. Yeah. I could not even see it. But mm-hmm. after I left, I figured out and I found out that, yeah, a lot of people were being traumatized by him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's still there. Sure. He's still there around teaching and everything. The story goes on. Like Bikram is still there teaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, oh, it's yes. funny. Uh, Ayurvedic massage is so intimate. And it's, it, I think there is a culture to it as well. And I'm sure I'm going to offend someone, but I'm thinking of my own Ayurvedic massage teacher. Mm-hmm. So I'll be quite specific. My own Ayurvedic massage teacher and the culture within that class and my own studies is, it was, you know, it's very dangerous because it's it can be very sexual and there's, there can be so much tension when, when people are naked and massaging each other. And and very intimate ways, and so it's it's um, bringing that element to your Meister room seems troubling. Yeah, I guess I guess this this is valid for any massage. You know, when you are massaging <laughs> yeah. somebody, it doesn't need to be a pedic, whatever it is, and yeah. you are alone with the person without your clothes. I mean, you must be completely ethical, and you need to watch yeah. your boundaries all the time because. Yeah. If you slide just a tiny bit, you're fucked. I mean, we all yeah, have our yeah. needs and desires and mm-hmm. the moments that we we go, the whole moments in our life. So, yeah, he, he was caught by his own ego. And, yeah, but, but the thing is, um, despite the intense practices, because I was taking a teacher training with him, there was nothing but, like, a strong... Uh, a strong practice in the morning and in the afternoon, but we would do some Mauna retreats that would stay four or sometimes 10 days in silence. And we would have to practice the whole series in the morning and in the evening and 45 minutes of pranayamas in the morning and in the evening and 45 minutes of meditation in Padmasana in the morning and in the evening. (laughs) <laughs> and there was this whole speech that you cannot remove your Padmasana, that you needed to learn with fear, that fear was a mental state that we should transcend. And people were killing themselves. They were mm-hmm. really like struggling so much. And yeah. But, yeah, we wanted to please him. We were afraid yeah. of him. He had that strong personality, that strong character, that only his hug will make you freak out, you know, because he squeezed you until you're born. So, uh, <laughs> I mean... I've learned a lot with him and I'm grateful because this is what I needed. And I believe a bit in this, in this quote that says we have the teacher that we, that we deserve. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Right. We, we are attracted to a certain type of teacher at certain stages in our lives and development because. Yeah. Just like a certain type of boyfriend. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. It's not becomes, necessarily healthy. And that becomes a teacher to, you know, and a mirror to who yeah. you are and the choices that you, yeah. that you like, mm. you know, and like, why do yeah. I like this? Yeah. You know. But, you know, I want to tell you about how I left because that's a very mm. interesting moment. The way I left this institution because he saw the, the potential or the, well, how could I put it, the dedication and this yeah. sincerity in my practice and in, in, in the way I was there, dedication. Mm-hmm. And he invited me to assist, to eventually start teaching. And he suggested that I should take an Ayurveda course. Because I mentioned that I would like to become a therapist therapist in his his company, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So when I did this Ayurveda course, I was finding out that the Ayurveda suggestions were almost the opposite from the things he he was teaching us. And he was teaching us very dangerous things. For example, there Mm. were some marma points that he was pressing, like there's no tomorrow. They are deadly. Mm. And he would like press our our eyeballs at the end Mm. of the massage. 
yes. so 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 hard that I needed to pray you know that I was not losing that I was that I was not being blind and oh your God. whole body shakes yeah 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 I mean everything was very intense and I would get so much like um purple that I needed yeah. to hide after the massage because I knew oh, my parents no. would <laughs> would run oh after him God. so it was yeah, those things, you know, that you don't tell people, but yeah, it happened. But I, I, I didn't know that was wrong <laughs> by that time. Mm, right. Sure. Yeah. And, but the thing is, um, I was invited to sing because by that time I was a professional singer and I was singing mm -hmm. in pubs and in bars and I got to a Jewish wedding band called... Yeah. Uh, the Yiddish mamas and the papas. <laughs> uh, the Yiddish mamas and papas, very nice. <laughs> and uh, and and somebody invited me to sing in a place in Bahia, so mm -hmm. I went to Bahia for a month to sing in a bar to promote his business. And when I was there, I saw a colleague of mine from yoga holding his yoga mat. Is Artur Verissimo, and a, a journalist. And he said, "Elena, you're here for Matthew's workshop." I said, Matthew who Palmer. is Matthew? Yeah. yeah. And I said, who is Matthew? I, I don't know him. Oh, he's here. You, you are here. You must go. You can't lose this opportunity. So I felt like I, I'm here and I must do this. And when I got to his room, I felt like a hippopotamus, like a monster. I felt like a Frankenstein. I felt like... I was so rude and my practice was so rough and I was so noisy and uh, and I didn't have bandas, I didn't have anything. <laughs> it was just <sighs> external strength and tension, but I was practicing already for a few years, but I realized my center was not there at all. Mm -hmm. I realized that the vinyasas was different, that he wasn't teaching drishti because he said drishti is an advanced practice only for the special ones. So I realized that I wasn't doing Ashtanga Vinyasa yoga. I was doing Kristalvans yeah. yoga. Yeah. Because wow. it was an international group over there. So I saw, I look around and I said, I want to do what they are doing. Yeah. So when yeah, I got back, I, yeah, that, exactly. And this international yeah. sure. language, because Ashtanga yoga is a language, yeah. you know, you go wherever in, 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 in any country you want and and the practice is more or less the same and there's a power on it there's a beauty yeah. on it yeah minus a few splits or two but... <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> <Or> hands, hands. <laughs> um, okay Shane. i think uh also probably the energy is very different because i know matthew well and yeah. he's such a soft beautiful like he's a sweet old schwenska nurturing yeah energy Absolutely. in the room Absolutely. and in people's Absolutely. practices is just so and, like, and what happened there as beautiful. well with that i i had a beautiful relationship a love relationship there i think it was yeah. the yeah it was a, a kind of very very sweet relationship that opened up my heart in a way yeah. that when i got back home and i went to the christophe's ashram because this guy he, he built it an ashram uh, oh I thought, wow, <laughs> I, I don't there. belong. Yeah. I don't belong here yeah. anymore. And yeah, I just amazing. left. I just left quietly. You know, I didn't want to argue or to say anything. I just disappeared and I never heard about him again. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> yeah, luckily our paths did not cross again. So <laughs> it's a good sign. <laughs> but Matthew... eventually you did start teaching and you yeah. started teaching with Fabio, yeah? Exactly. So I, by this time that I was orphan, I mean, that I didn't have a teacher or a community or whatever, uh, I started practicing on my own until I heard from Fabio Sayon. And, uh, yeah. and Fabio, that was the one that Fabio did also. Um, he did No, he did it. No. Yeah, exactly. oh, he, he kind of did a, a level two or something. His, his yeah, he did a level two. Yeah, level two. He, and I, yeah. he yeah. and I did the level two together. Exactly. I was also yeah. on I that training. I, I don't remember you there at all. <laughs> Seriously, I have no memory. I'm also of, there. I have no memory of you being there at all. Yes, you do. No, no I don't remember you. <laughs> you were heavily pregnant. I at the wasn't time. heavily pregnant. <laughs> okay, not in the first the... trimester. It was very heavy to touch. I remember adjusting to thinking she is really pregnant. Oh my no, god! No, you didn't. 
Nobody knew. Oh, yeah. I knew. You told me. Yeah, at the end. No, I knew you were pregnant. Everyone could tell. So just to 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 get back to how I started teaching, um, <laughs> one day I was at a restaurant and somebody started talking to me and he said that he had a clinic and he was treating people with all sorts of addiction, not just drug oh, addiction, yeah. but internet, sex, games, whatever. Yeah. And that yeah. he wanted to teach them yoga and he wanted a yoga that was very dynamic and I said to him that I was practicing Ashtanga and teaching Ash no, no I didn't say teaching because I wasn't teaching I said I was practicing and doing this formation this teacher training and he said please come and teach at my school and I said oh, cool. no I'm just a student I'm not ready to teach he said but you need to start somewhere some <laughs> somehow wow. yeah. so, and I said no I'm not ready I'm just a student seriously and he said why don't you give it a try? If the students like, you stay. If they don't, mm -hmm. you don't. So this is how I started. He insisted Amazing. and I said, well, why not? And I, I had no idea what I was doing, but yeah, but it worked. And I stayed there for a while. <laughs> I was helping them um, for a while. And then, and then, yeah. And then I was teaching with Fabio, assisting Fabio. I've learned a lot from him. It was an amazing experience before, because he was indeed a very good uh, asana and ashtanga teacher but of course we were doing too many things together we were teaching together cooking together waking up together practicing together yeah. and we were very strict <laughs> because you know, i went into his into his um Aesthetic was life. lifestyle World, exactly yeah. Yeah, yes we yes. started waking up at four something and practicing before teaching and then you know all sorts of strict routines and he blew up. I mean, when we got our authorization, because it was me and a few other Brazilian students at once, and yeah. before that, he was the only one. Right. Yeah. Certified. I've... No, no, he, wasn't yeah. no, he, he wasn't was offered. Certified. He was offered certification. No. Maybe. Okay. You're making anyway. up stories. Well, he was almost finished with third. I know, but he wasn't certified. Okay. No, not, he not wasn't. Training. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> he's, he's phenomenal i mean just for most people probably don't know him outside of brazil but yeah. i remember i would study fabio while he practiced and i would watch mm -hmm. it and it was it was like watching another kind of physical animal mm -hmm. uh do things that a human being can't do and you try and watch mm -hmm. it it's like how does a kangaroo do that how does a, a <laughs> monkey do that or a, a, a cheetah like you're just wa watching it's like how and then mm -hmm. i would try to emulate myself after fabio and there was no way to <laughs> do the practice the way that he did it which mm -hmm. seemed so perfect and effortless and i yeah i felt like i watched him and he wouldn't really sweat <laughs> and he would he would just reach back and hold on to his thighs and the back bends, but not in any kind of, not with any kind of effort. Yeah. It just happened. Everything that mm -hmm. he did seemed to just happen by itself. And I, it was impossible to emulate Fabio's practice, yeah. and it was he yeah, was yeah. astonishing. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's a true that he was very, very dedicated, that he was practicing mm -hmm. yoga since young age, that he was genetically favor favorable, yeah. huh? that yeah. he had his it's... facilities. <laughs> but yeah. also, um, it was the beginning of, um, of me observing, you know, what it means to hide yourself and to use the practice as um, escapism or to use the practice um to suppress to 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 hide a bit um some issues that that maybe the practice can't can't um let me think i saw so many things in my sort like people that had an amazing asana practice but then in their lives there was so much conflicts and trouble and suffering and um not integration, not integration after after the, the asana practice, you know. It feels like yeah. one thing was in, in your mat and the other thing is like uh, you close the door and, and you can't carry the same no the same knowledge outside. Yeah, and it's you bring up a beautiful point there because there is something to that whole, I mean, and we were talking about this the other day, um, you know, students often put the teachers on the pedestal that you know wake up at 
3 a.m. and do their practice and, you know, are so restricted in their diet and their sleep schedule yeah. and they're, mm -hmm. you know, studying oh. the sutras and they're living this very, um, Jesus like, yeah, aesthetic, mm -hmm. aesthetic, mm -hmm. ascetic kind of mm -hmm. living, right? Yeah. And, but there's also hiding in that kind of living because Absolutely. you don't ever have to face certain things about yourself or you exactly. don't ever have to put yourself in situations that might like irritate you or bring up some kind of emotional response. Right. And so you're mm -hmm. so regulated in your life that, that you're mm -hmm. protecting yourself from any mm -hmm. kind of struggle or difficulty so that you can kind of have the appearance of a perfect life or a perfect yeah. kind of existence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. certainly children are that kind of disturbance <laughs> yeah well children <laughs> definitely bring a, a whole other kind of disturbance uh, right? yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah and it's... no but absolutely and, yeah. and you put yourself you, and, and you buy this pedestal thing so you put yeah. yourself in the top of the tower you yeah. know and you you start to believe that you are somehow superior because you're yeah. so disciplined and you're so correct and you're so yeah. dedicated and your practice is so incredible and uh whew, and that's that can become a a big sansara <laughs> a big condition here yeah and hard Absolutely. to break up so this is the problem when when he blew up because it was like a volcano an eruption you know when the eruption yeah. came and yeah. he decided to quit yeah it was very chaotic i mean yeah it was it was a it was a mess we were we had a school together and he was always telling me that we were sharing the school that I wasn't assisting, but he just said to me, Elin, I'm not practicing Ashtanga yoga anymore. I am. And I, I just had my authorization and I said, yeah. now I am the student of um, Ramahama Ramaswami, Srivatsa Ramaswami, and I do Vinyasa Krama, and I suggest you become my student. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So that's what yeah. I, I felt that, like there was some, like he had finished I, I, in my memory, and this is a long time ago and, and uh, distant, but in my memory, we finished the training. He, he was, we were doing pranayama together, which was a big deal. It seemed like he was getting, you know, 20 postures a month. And mm -hmm. then he came home and I felt like he would be certified. And then suddenly, no, he was gone. He was out. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Yeah. Him? Yeah out mm. <laughs> yeah there was a lot of things that he was suppressing i guess is the word when you pretend you do not see mm. you know mm. he was so there was a lot of things that he was not pretending not see just for the convenience of it because mm -hmm. it was his life and he was yeah you know so i guess suddenly a lot of things came up um, at the same time and it was his opportunity to to step out of it completely in a very messy way, but I, I don't judge him. I mean, it was the way he was able to do it and it's fine. Yeah. And, and it's he really, took another path. It's hard too. I think when, um, when you're that, like you're saying, you're that bought into the, the cycle and into the belief of, of, you know, you've sacrificed so much and everything's for this practice and this practice is making you special. And, mm it's like really an all or nothing kind of way of yeah. being with yeah. the practice and being in the world. And so mm -hmm. you don't know how to hold the practice and be like, include other things. And mm -hmm. it's hard. It's a very difficult stage, I think, for yeah. a lot of teachers or practitioners that go fully into it, That's like immersive experience. And then, so and then life, is no longer accommodating that immersive experience and and how do you how do you still practice mm -hmm. how do you hold the practice when mm -hmm. your entire existence has been built to support this practice and now yeah. it can't yeah. be yeah exactly it's, it's a bit and of a also crisis. to an image yeah, yeah. and to an image that you make of yeah. yourself and and yeah. expectations that we put on ourselves and other people put as well because people had him totally. like a real model yeah. and uh, when I when I was in my school with him I was Fabio's girlfriend I was like whoa <laughs> are you Fabio's girlfriend like people exactly. wanted to take pictures with him yeah and um yeah. so yeah I was I was watching those things and <laughs> uh and when when my my authorization came uh, um also it was a bit chaotic because some some Brazilian 
friends of mine, they left the course. They they oh, they yeah. refuse. They mm-hmm. kind of they quit because yeah, they saw a lot of things that they were not really yeah. resonating. And they decided to leave as well. So it was, it was, but also Sharat was adapting and he was, it was very intense for him to assume the whole thing after Patabi Joyce passed away. So everything was quite new and things were accommodating. But that teacher training, to be honest, was, was, was a mess. And I felt like in kindergarten. No, Were you there like... together, the two of you? Was... No, I, that was the training after ours. I thought maybe you'd done another one. No. <laughs> <laughs> there was one where where they'd cured AIDS. That was in 2014. Okay. That was a like, different training. You did training. that one where they cured AIDS. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. And in my said, in the teacher training I was, there was Lucia Andrade there, oh, PJ, I, I remember was there. I mean a lot PJ. of people, but and Todd I remember and there was a guy. And... <laughs> that got severely injured with an adjustment, oh. severely injured. A Mexican guy who needed surgery, and he, oh my god, yeah, he had a strong wow. back problem. Because the problem was, we were supposed to adjust, and we were rotating, like uh, yeah. alternating and adjust. But in any moment, Sharad gave instructions on how to adjust whatsoever. So some people, yeah. like myself, was experienced some a little bit experienced teachers yeah. but some were there doing that for the first time yeah yeah fucking up so we were the guinea pigs we were the one yeah. exposing and uh and we needed to do the catching thing yeah. <laughs> so you can you imagine yeah i can yeah. i yeah. remember in in our training which was supposed to be the very experienced one harmony yeah. and jeff uh adjusted me and i said to them afterward like that was that was the first decent adjustment I've had all month. <laughs> it was the first good one. Yeah. yeah. They were yeah. really good because I they had been mm-hmm. teaching a long time. Mm-hmm. But so much of it was like what you're describing, people who just didn't have a practice for, for adjustment. Yeah. 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 Because so anyway, I mean you when you're a teacher and, and you know this firsthand too, and it's what you're speaking to is you might have the practice. You might be a practitioner and be able to do the practice, but that doesn't necessarily make you a good teacher or or good Absolutely. at giving adjustments or adjusting bodies yeah. because yeah. that itself is an entirely different practice that actually is completely independent of the practice itself in some ways. I mean, your body mm-hmm. has to have the intelligence of the practice and know the practice itself, mm-hmm. but to adjust someone in the posture is like a whole other thing it's like a completely yeah. it's different... a different skill that you need yeah. to perfect yeah. over time and yeah. to to yeah. know a little bit about anatomy and body mechanics yeah. otherwise you, you injure people you know yeah and or, the and just, or even body lis- yeah. or even listening yeah yeah listen mm-hmm. listening to the body listening to the... exactly this feedback yeah, yeah yeah but of course when you are there and he's watching you and you, yeah. there's so much pressure and you just want to to please him I mean, it was a pressure pen, you know, in terms of energy. Mm. So we were all very yeah. tense and trying to to please him and to, you know, everybody wants to be seen. Everybody yeah. wants to call to catch his eyes. So yeah. it was it was very complicated. But anyway, I, I was self-arised and I got back home and I started teaching in a small room that I rented. Oh, nice. And... And then I was invited to another shala and then to yeah. another shala. So I started teaching in different schools in Sao Paulo, yeah. Yoga Flow, My Yoga, Una Yoga, Santosha. <laughs> and then I eventually uh, opened my own shala, Stanga Pitanga, which was a house, a real shala that I was living Amazing. on the second floor. And I, I made a very, very beautiful room at the bottom and I had my students they all had the key they would come in we had a very nice vibe <laughs> and, and I stayed there for a few years um, and then uh, I mean by that time I was very mm. prejudiced about yoga workshops I said, oh, yeah. why would you go to a workshop the teacher doesn't know your body doesn't know your practice da 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 
But I decided to give it a chance and I went to a Mike Roberts workshop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know for this. <laughs> he's quite good there. <laughs> yeah, he's a nice, <laughs> nice guy. And well, I beautiful. took my guitar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I took my guitar and I... I I was I was already singing kirtans and mantras yeah. by that time, so I was playing some songs with a friend and he joined, and it was so nice and we jammed together and it was real fun. Mm-hmm. And after that workshop, he said, "Oh, Elin, I'm going to do a month long training in Purple Valley. Why yeah. don't you come?" And I said, "Well, mm-hmm. if you knew the price, the cost of a flight from Brazil to India." It's not mm. easy. I mean, I, I sold my car in the first time I went. I was yeah. saving the whole year to go for Let's us see. from Brazil. It's really expensive. And also, you know, missing a month of work, yeah. you know, the, the costs there, uh, it's, it's very hard for us to go. Um, people from Asia or from other countries, mm-hmm. uh, uh, continents, they don't realize but some 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 of us can can have a big disadvantage, you know, and mm-hmm. and put a lot of effort to to make this sustainable over time. Yeah, yeah. going to my so and spending lots of time there. But anyway, um, so I said to him that I could not afford it, unfortunately. And then after a few weeks, he said, "Would you come and assist me?" I did an assistant, um, uh... and I said, "Sure." And there. Mm. So yeah. then I I went and uh, he was yeah. sharing the workshop with Laruga, and yeah. Laruga oh. had Laruga had uh, David as her assistant, and I was assisting Mark. Deepika was yeah. there as well as his mm. guest or uh, as his yeah. student. Mm. Other things happens there that I I feel I don't need to to bring up too much. But it was it was a bit chaotic, and I think after that, Mark decided that they were not going to work together again because they have different mm, views or yeah. methodologies or whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. And after that experience, it's, it's hard mm. enough when your boyfriend girlfriend like <laughs> Harmony and I like you can have different <laughs> methodologies. You can have yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can have egos, you know, that yeah. that come up. Like if uh, there's a backbender in the room, of course I want to work with the backbender, <laughs> but no, no, Harmony also <laughs> wants to work with the backbender, and then you there's fighting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was it was complicated. I mean, I didn't I didn't receive any instruction. At the beginning, and I asked, "What should I do?" And they, they said, yeah. "Just do your thing. You know what to do." So I was yeah. helping everybody. Yeah. But then, yeah, then she wasn't happy that I was helping everybody, and I should stay with the beginners. And then a lot of right. things are starting yeah. coming up, yeah. which I don't need to go deeper. But you can yeah. imagine. So yeah. it ended up very yeah. complicated, very complicated. Yeah. But I was, I was there. I was having a great time. I was practicing yeah. on my own the early mornings. Nobody was helping me. But I was, I was giving my heart there, and I, it was a very beautiful experience. And I enjoyed Mark's classes a lot and singing yeah. with him. <laughs> yeah. And everyone would lie down to do their shavasanas. I would take my guitar and sing some mantras, and that was magical because that room has a wonderful. Mm. Uh, how do you acoustic. say acoustic, acoustic. exactly yeah. it's, it's brilliant that's Shala but anyway so what happened is when I was there somebody wrote Mark and said I need someone to replace me in Trioga for a month oh because I'm gonna be in Mysore yeah and and it ended up being Ursula and Mark oh. said I cannot go but my assistant is here and she just told me that she wants to leave Brazil <laughs> that she wants to to travel yeah. so you could ask her and, and he recommended me mm-hmm. so yeah so a few months later i was in trioga yeah and i taught for a month in soho yeah nice. and it was yeah. such a nice experience and yeah. at the end uh, the students were sending letters to to jonathan <laughs> to the director oh, by that time, yeah. giving nice feedbacks and seeing how great it was and how nice they, they they learned from me and then jonathan came to thank me and i said hey actually if you need somebody, I'm available and I could, if you have any opportunity ever, I would be willing to to come and to teach for Trioga. Mm-hmm. And he said, actually, yeah, we do have. And they invited me to run the Mysore Chelsea program. Oh, wow. Amazing. Wow. So you yeah. moved to England. 
Yeah, and 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 he said, "Go back home," because I was coming back home to my shala. Yeah, have a think, <laughs> and if you're sure, we found out the numbers, and and you're back in three months. So I got back home. I sold absolutely everything I had, from wow. the sofa to my car. I broke up my relationship. I, wow. I, um, yeah, the rugs, everything, my my cups, my plates. I sold everything <laughs> I could sell. And uh, and I took the flight and I went to London. I was thirty three, yeah. and I started yeah. teaching there. Wow. And it was a very Amazing. cool experience. Yeah, how but long were what, you what there for? Me, in in Tri yoga for three years and a half. What mm-hmm. moved me? I mean, the reason I chose to go, I was thirty three. Is like, who am I? I have a shala. I'm teaching, and I have so much to learn. Why am I stuck in here? I need to go and get the chance to meet all those experienced practitioners and and learn a lot. And and, and then, you know, I could grow as a person and as a teacher because I felt a bit, I mean, isolated. Nobody comes to to Brazil. It's not not very, no, more often nowadays. (laughs) Yeah, nowadays it's more often, but by the time, no. So I went to London and I was taking all sorts of Ashtanga workshop with all Davids, David William, David Kells, David Garrigues, David whatever. Uh, David Swenson. Every, every David, every David Swenson, you can imagine. All the Davids. Yeah, every yeah. David you can imagine, I saw them. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and also, I don't know, I saw Danny Paradise and uh, so many, so many nice workshop it, and not that nice kind of workshops. Too, honestly. He's yeah. very, yeah, very in the very in the in the Dave. He's very the he's right there in the David. Starts with a D. Yeah, anyway. circle. Yeah. It's, um, so it was wow. it was very interesting, and um and then I met Gregor Mael. Mm. I went to Paris and I did a week intensive wow. with him, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I I really resonated. I really was touched by by the way he was sharing. Mm-hmm. And what he was sharing, because there was so much wisdom and so much depth into what he was yeah. sharing with us, yeah. um, and some yogic meditations with visualizations, with yogic breath, with waves, mm-hmm. with mantras. It was so interesting, and mm-hmm. he he connected the tantra with the ashtanga, and the meditations that we do are connected to what we already do in the practice. So. I found it all very interesting and I decided to take a teacher training with him. Mm. Wow. Yeah. So in, in the, Australia? In, no, in Bali. In Bali. Okay. In Bali. Yeah. <laughs> so when it was 2018, I said to Trioga, I will, I will pause for a month because I want to take this teacher training. And they said, no, you won't. It's not, it's not oh. going to work because I was trying to build the group and Chelsea was a bit difficult place to sustain a MISO program and things were going well. And they said, if you stop now and we bring somebody, it's not a good timing. Ta, 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 ta. And I said, yeah, but I have to do it because I had the feeling that I was going to be pregnant soon. And that was my chance, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> what does that feeling feel like? <laughs> Intuition. <laughs> How do you... Does you feel it like in your mucous membranes? Like where do you feel that in your where in do you feel heart. that in your heart? You feel here that? in this oh, toe. In this in one. Toe, so I will be pregnant yeah. soon. Exactly. Did you? Did you, was there a like a footballer mm. that you were eyeing? Like Wayne Rooney? You, I will. Yeah. Did you have a partner at the time? Mm. Yes, I had a partner because three months after I moved to London, I met Bruno, who is my actual partner. Yeah, and it was interesting because he was the antithesis, the opposite from what I was previously looking for. No, I was yeah. looking for a vegetarian guy, a yogi, or a musician, or somebody very sensitive and who had a very female side, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and Bruno didn't have those qualities. He was a football <laughs> player. He liked going he, to the pub. He was a footballer. I knew yeah. it. I knew it was a footballer. <laughs> and an economist and working in an office. Yeah. But yeah, we ended up having so many things in common and getting along so well. And he would make me laugh a lot. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So yeah, here we are. We are together and we have a beautiful baby uh, who's going nice. to turn four very soon. Yeah. Is he he's British or is he also Brazilian? He is Peruvian. 
Peruvian. Okay. Yeah, he's Peruvian. He's half Peruvian, wow. half Italian. Yeah. Oh. That's incredible. Okay. And now you're living yeah. in Spain. Yeah, no, I'm in Spain. So what happened is after I, I took this teacher training with Gregor, mm -hmm. and then again, um, I was practicing for more than 15 years and I decided to take a teacher training because I felt I was ready finally yeah. to, you know, to take advantage of it. Yeah. There were people that weren't the practitioners there. There were people that okay. just started a few months ago. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. But this is this <laughs> You're is gonna get that, is. right? You're gonna get that. You are gonna get that in yeah. the room. Yeah. <laughs> this is how it is nowadays. So so yeah, so that levels the thing really low, you know, because how can you how yeah. can you decollate? Uh, I don't know. So yeah. yeah, so it was it was a beautiful experience. It's always nice to to be around him and to hear to listen to him talk and especially what I do like a lot about Gregor is that he he's very critic about everything openly. He exposes yeah. his, his his thoughts and his impressions, and he disconstructs this guru and mm -hmm. idolatry thing all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's sharing his feelings a lot. Yeah. and when when we ended up the 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 month long which was very emotional and everybody was so touched and we had like a little ceremony and he almost cried and i said i'm going to miss you all mm. and that was so so true that was so yeah. sincere you know so he he, he goes that not goes down but we are all at the same level. Hi. Yeah. Mm. Nobody yeah, needs yeah. to go down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we can know, lift are... each other up. <laughs> exactly. We lift each other. And this is something that happened yeah. when I was living in London and Sharad came to do like a week long guided classes, whatever. Yeah. I was there and I had to convince a lot of students to come because it's going to be a beautiful experience because you're going to meet Sharad and it's going to be so nice, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and it was the first class and we were all there waiting, 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 waiting. And then he arrives, take his phone out of his pocket, starts scrolling down the phone in front of all of us. Then he puts his phone down, look at all of us. It was the first day and he says, Samastitihi. Yeah. To me, that broke my heart. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's a simple thing, but yeah. I was expecting as a human being mm. in yeah. front of all of us willing to see him, that he would say, hello, how are you? Thank you for coming. Good morning, whatever he chooses, but not summer city heat. He was not in his home. Mm. He was not in his um, home, you know? And- uh, It was uh, your first time with him on the in tour. <laughs> In a tour, it was. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. Yeah. That's so typical. It's yeah, and, and it's, it's always that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I was, yeah. Yeah. But the anyway, thing with the then... phone is interesting. Like that's that mm. that more than anything might have um, broke the mood. Yeah, <laughs> and it was just about you know you stop you stop you mm. stop, and then my student who I insisted to go she left it crying because she felt mm -hmm. so much pressure and she felt mm -hmm. so like inadequate and she was afraid mm -hmm. that he would tell her to stop. And I just said, you know, this is not why I practice for. This is not what I want to, to mm -hmm. teach. And, um, and I, do, I do respect and I do value a lot what's going on there. But I feel like I, yeah, I... I uh, this is not anymore what resonates with my mm -hmm. heart and what the practice means to my life nowadays. If you okay. just spent a month with Gregor Malle disrupting mm. the guru idolatry, mm. going from that room to Sharat will be quite shocking. <laughs> that would be a shocking mm -hmm. transition for sure. Mm. Because there's there's one person who is trying to be make the experience democratic for all human beings. Mm -hmm. And then you're going on to the next situation where someone is, is um, very much trying to position himself as uh, the ultimate authority, ultimate yeah. authority and no other, yeah. 
no other point of view will be respected in that room. Or at least prop up the hierarchy. I mean, I think it, it comes minimum. down to like, minimum. yeah, propping up the hierarchy versus creating a different type of, of but, relational structure between teachers and students. And he's also made it very, very clear that he has nothing but contempt for, for me and for my friends. So I, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, I guess it was the same opposite situation that I had when I left Cristovo and I met mm. Matthew. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, he's a wow. nice man. Yeah, yeah it's like, wow. <laughs> it's the there opposite. Is, yeah. There is <laughs> another uh, another yeah. way of doing things, of feeling, of feeling the thing, of things, you know. Yeah. And this is what I felt. I felt we were not being empowered with mm -hmm. his presence. We left there feeling feeling uh, inadequate mm -hmm. and and to me this is basically basically the opposite of what the practice should do you know we, we are we, yeah. we, we are searching for fulfillment yeah for peace yeah. and for for getting in contact with our higher self who ultimately has all the answers not someone else <laughs> yeah so yeah, yeah it was a bit weird Mm -hmm. so it's then, interesting too the practice mm -hmm. itself is hard enough i mean the practice itself already has the ability to make you feel not good enough like <laughs> yeah. all the time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so like the last thing in my opinion that mm. you need is another teacher mm. I mean mm -hmm. you already have a practice that's holding you up to you know yeah. a fairly impossible standard for like 99.9% .9 of the humans on the planet yeah mm -hmm. and so you already are feeling kind of like I'm not really that great at this mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then on top of it you add a teacher who's reinforcing the fact that you're just not good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's kind of like the ultimate way of whipping yourself or like you were saying, reinforcing these negative, um, you know, beliefs about ourselves in an unconscious mm -hmm. way. Right. Like mm -hmm. I have to try harder. I have to be better. I have to keep working hard. I have to keep striving. I have to keep you know showing up i have to keep like we're just kind of berating ourselves around this, yeah. this patterning that we already yeah. have and mm -hmm. and exactly what you're saying the yoga if it is to work if it's truly to work has to disrupt that patterning yeah but how do yeah. you disrupt that patterning not by I have to disrupt a, a, any i have to i mean because yeah. we don't have to anything at all exactly and uh, the, it all begins with this you must practice six days a week or right. you are a loser or you're not yeah. an ashtangi or you're not in yoga yeah. or you're not a valid person and i yeah. can't accept that anymore it doesn't no. fit into yeah. my life i don't want my students yeah. to take this home yeah. and um, for example fabio would not walk two blocks because it will make his hip tight you know so <laughs> right. oh, okay it's beautiful you see his practice and it's incredible but he doesn't walk right you know? so what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> what do you do this thing <laughs> to stay on your sofa waiting for the next practice yeah, I mean, yeah. it doesn't make no sense so i think yeah, yeah I mean, that's real and there's there's something else i i have to point it here i want to point it here <laughs> I don't believe now that I'm 40, that is one single activity, physical activity, that is good enough or that is whole enough or is complete enough or the health of our muscles and our joints. We need a variety of stimulus. Mm -hmm. And if you are practicing two hours of Ashtanga Yoga, six days a week, I mean, how can you get it? So... Eventually, we're going to need to negotiate, we're going to need to alternate, we're going to need to choose some days to do something different. Otherwise, we will mm -hmm. just create more and more imbalances and chronic mm -hmm. stress with repetitive movements that generally are not well done. Yeah, I, I agree 100% with your point of view. <laughs> and I also feel like now that I'm in my 40s, I have very little time for relationships that are unhealthy. Uh, toxic people who are projecting their own, you know, childhood bush bullshit on onto me and been yeah. trying to manipulate me. I've zero fucking time for it. I am very mm -hmm. happy to reduce the number of relationships I have. I'm mm -hmm. not looking for more relationships. But we have increased the miles that we're walking. <laughs> we increase the we 
I can do a lot of miles. I was not happy about taking on these dogs, but I do walk a lot more. <laughs> and, and it uh, does affect your practice. <laughs> I, I you know i have some friend, i have some old there were old relationships i had from school that i just cut off because it's like i don't feel good yeah when i'm talking yeah. to you, when I'm me with too you. i'm not I have no fucking time for it fuck off exactly <laughs> and and at the same time the connections that are left you know mm. which are, are more important few, <laughs> yeah. yeah they become so significant and you know because i've been traveling so much i have no physical friends my i, I reach yeah. my friends by whatsapp and i send those yeah. voice messages that last for almost 20, 20 minutes but they are so <laughs> meaningful to me you know they are all i have and yeah. and i love my friends uh, but but yeah i, I mean time yeah. time yeah, is, especially um, when you have a young one like you do. It's, exactly. Yeah, so time is, is, is an issue. Mm -hmm. Your focus. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, when I'm not serving this human being, <laughs> yeah. I I need to choose very carefully. You know, I use my time, and then of course we need to choose the relationships that are worth to maintain it or not. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Well, so what are we what are we doing now? You're going to be in Palma in Mallorca. Are you? This is mm. this is it now. Is this is your long term no. relationship? <laughs> there's no, there's <laughs> nothing like this is it in my life. <laughs> no, first thing is that I love traveling. So I mean, if he wasn't by my son, I would keep traveling for a mm. while. But yeah, he needs some stability, and I I can yeah. feel that by now because we travel quite a lot. He's very he's a fight experience <laughs> person. Mm -hmm. We yeah. I mean when we left um London and I, yeah. I was pregnant, I was invited to teach in Java Mukti Berlin, took over for a friend of mine. So I was there for two months. I was five months pregnant. Then we moved to Valencia. I had my baby in Valencia, it came the pandemic. He was three months old. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was very complicated. I mean, it was amazing, 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 but very difficult, very difficult, and very difficult because he was a terrible sleeper. He had very severe <laughs> sleep issues, and I was basically spending my days on a dark room trying to make him sleep mm -hmm. because otherwise he couldn't stop crying. He was so tired. So anyway, he was like a strong dedication. I was breastfeeding the whole day and the whole evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for three years basically yeah <laughs> uh, and then when 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 the pandemic ended and we got our second vaccine mm. we decided to travel and we went to costa rica we were willing to leave there i stayed three months there and it it didn't it i it didn't resonate with me yeah uh, i was a bit disappointed with what i've seen and we've been to Peru then for three months. We've been to Brazil for a few months. We've been back to Peru and back to Brazil. And then I decided I was going to live in the mountains in Brazil. And yeah. we were going for that. <laughs> and somebody invited me to come and teach in Mallorca because she had two kids and she needed some, some help, help with yeah. her shala. So, so this is why I came. And I stay teaching here seven months at her shala. Wow, mm -hmm. her life turns to another direction. She's moving the city, and she's she sold basically she sold the shala to another teacher, who who came up, and I opened my own Mysore program last week. <laughs> oh wow! wow. Yeah, I'm teaching to the mosquitoes and the flies. <laughs> <laughs> what what part of Palma are you on? What part of Mallorca? I am in Palma, in Santa Catalina. I rented okay. oh, uh, a, a very beautiful shala in the morning. It's called Earth Yoga. And um, okay. yeah, and I'm starting again from scratch. So it, it's going to take time to build, but I'm, I'm very happy about it. I really like the space. I like the people all around and the owner is so sweet. And yeah. I, honestly, I'm going to give it a try. We are happy here. This is a very healthy environment for my son to grow. Yeah, mm. and it's a beautiful town too in the mountains. We have in our bathroom a, a tile from Santa Catalina. Oh, that's really oh. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're with us. 
webinar yeah. today. I think about that. you. I didn't know. <laughs> Send you some good juju. <laughs> Thank you. There That's probably, cool. Harmony probably, would probably say there are too many Jews, uh, but more you know it's fine that's kind of do <laughs> now we have a juju in our bathroom <laughs> yeah it's so beautiful there it's incredible yeah yeah we're happy here for now we want to enjoy it a bit more i mean my my partner works with um, environmental issues and climate change and he's very mm -hmm. pessimistic about the future we have endless conversations yeah. about uh, yeah. the six yeah. mass extinction and the situation we're in Gregor Mael is also very like aware and he brings this up a lot in his classes, you know, mass about extinction. That's what you said. Yeah, the yeah, six yeah. Masses. yeah, yeah. We're close to that. Yeah. 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 I mean, mm -hmm. and we, th this lifestyle that we want to believe is, is going to last forever. Yeah. No. It's not sustainable. And very soon we're going to be in, in deep trouble. So I know mm -hmm. it's a bit. <laughs> Uh, pessimistic or whatever but yeah we want to enjoy the the last years living the dream while we can because we know eventually <laughs> we need to we need to grow our own food we need to have yeah. our own water stream if, if we uh, are lucky then we will die wow. before it happens and it will be our children it's not often mm. we meet people who are as pessimistic as we are about the future <laughs> She's but harmony is like off off camera. Harmony is like we need a well. We need to find a well as soon as we yeah. well. We we're gonna come yeah. into some property. We're gonna buy a well. We're gonna make sure we have enough water. Don't worry. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every fucking the, day it's like this. The reality uh, is, yeah. when when everything happens, it really doesn't matter if you do have a well or not, because someone will steal it from you. Yeah. I yeah. I see. If you want to get a property a in a compound with a well, then I need assault rifles. <laughs> that's the, that's where we are. Yeah. You don't want to yeah. be in that situation. We're better off with cyanide pills than assault rifles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, but if we, I mean, if we who are the yoga teachers and 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 trying to guide people, you know, to a better <laughs> awareness, if we don't speak about it or if we don't try to awaken this um, consciousness <clears throat> in our student, then who will? Yeah. I mean, it's our duty as well to speak about this issue and uh, mm -hmm. to rethink again and again about our lifestyle. And, and although I, I know I try to do my best, uh, um, the other day I was in a shop and I bought a stupid T-shirt that was shiny. And I, and I got it home and I was, fuck, this is full of plastic. No, I no. mean, why? Well, you know, I didn't do the connection in my, in from, my head. Yeah, why did I need this? From China as well. Exactly. And, <laughs> and full of plastic and the fiber and everything. And I just, oh, this is pretty. I will take home. And it's, it's so intrinsic in our, in our lives that we don't make the connection. You know, even us, that supposedly are trying mm -hmm. to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. So, well, I mean, on the upside of that, at least it will last you through the uh, apocalypse. You know, these plastic <laughs> rolls. There's always you. an upside <laughs> to plastic. Always. Yeah. Now it's earth plus plastic. It's not that yeah. terrible. There's it's one purpose gonna, it's not for human beings. No, it's years. the single motivating factor for the creation of human beings is plastic. Uh, yeah. This is our value. This is what we bring to the universe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But now you're in a beautiful, very natural space. <laughs> <It's not laughs> yeah. So that's, and nice. Seem, that's nice. Exactly. Yeah. And and we are we are, you know, my husband works from home. I am giving my heart to this Meister program. Yeah. I really hope it works. But if it doesn't, we are ready for our next adventure. Yeah. Mm. Amazing. Well, mm. how Amazing. can people come and study with you? So you're it's yeah. more than just mosquitoes, but we can actually get some human beings in there. Where where can we where can we push them to come find you? Yeah. So they can contact me in Instagram or in my email. Yeah. They can show up to Earth Yoga every morning. Um, Elena underscore Rosen, uh, Rosenthal. Rosenthal. Yes, exactly. And I, I I like to to offer some kirtans or some meetings where we can chant together. And I believe that somehow, uh, not complementary, but it opens up different okay. perceptions upon the devotional aspect of yoga. 
that transcends, in my view, any religion or any mm -hmm. form. And yeah. the problem with Ashtanga is that we get so obsessed about form, about the oh. shape of it, that we are missing this essence, which is the bhakti aspect or the devotional aspect or this um, creating inner heart. space. Yeah. yeah, but also creating some inner space where mm -hmm. we where we disidentify with our own personality, our persona, our roles in life. So it's mm -hmm. more like a neutral space of pure potential and love because love is the pure potentiality of God. And the Kirtan, mm -hmm. they help me to access this, this pure, the purest love, the purest mm -hmm. love. And normally we get so um, limited upon love to your partner or love to your son but the love for for god which is the creation the dimension is so much profound and infinite i would say mm -hmm. that you know i am i am in this track of love when i sing and i've i've been having some very interesting experiences internal experiences when i allow myself to stop judging or analyzing and really like dissolve myself into this love and it's incredible so somehow i'm still trying to find a way to allow myself to share this with people and to feel worth it like i i, I can do that it's it's okay to sing instead of putting a track you know <laughs> yeah, yeah it's okay take your guitar and sing for them so i'm i'm getting there yeah, well, I think that everyone should follow you because of the songs you're doing with your son on Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> which are full of love. They're so <laughs> gorgeous. And I don't know how your son, like, understands, like, knows the exact part to sing in the perfect way. <laughs> As a four-year-old, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is like, <laughs> like it's going to go viral for sure. You two are mm. just absolutely like blissed out in love mm. and it's so cute and Aww. so beautiful it just yeah every time I see the two of you I like remember my son at that age and I'm like mm -hmm. oh it was the best <laughs> please don't, best. Grow. Need... don't grow <laughs> don't grow don't grow make sure that I'm following so on the yeah you Aww. just keep saving those videos because one day 10 <laughs> years from now they're going to show up for you like this memory from 10 mm. years ago and you're going to be like oh my gosh he's so you cute. know I know we cannot project anything into our children but I just hope he's a better musician than I and he can teach me something <laughs> oh he'll be he's you know? gonna be amazing we're going to play together and jam together because he's what? very musical and oh uh, my gosh yes clearly clearly he's an absolutely gifted musician it's incredible well i'm now follower 9314 i'm so excited <laughs> nice Thank to you meet so you much. follower yeah. 9314 are you a robot or are you real <laughs> she's real he's real we think <laughs> he's listening to it right now <laughs> that's very nice it's okay what, that's enough you've had enough yeah okay mm. <laughs> thank you so much and it was a pleasure so to meet you yeah so beautiful thank you so much for inviting me it was an honor to be with yeah. you guys and amongst those amazing practitioners that you invite and also thank you for this incredible contribution that you guys are doing to us oh, who love the you. practice it's invaluable that's uh, invaluable oh. is the word yeah yeah yes. it is yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much. I I, uh, I enjoy in your podcast. They 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 are a very nice company dear to me. Thank you. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm thank glad you. we keep you company. <laughs> That's very and nice. maybe we'll when see I'm you in person blue. one day. That's yeah. Nice. Hopefully. In person company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be beautiful. And also, I think you have some like old 
videos on their old lives of when you were interviewing different women about their pregnancy experience exactly if someone is interested so that's also yes. another yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean there was a series of interviews that i did mm -hmm. about maternity and the ashtanga yeah. and you know this moment of pregnancy and the yeah. breastfeeding and everything so if someone is interested you can find this on my on my instagram somewhere yeah. Uh, I interviewed Jessica Walden, and that was in English, and oh. Harmony, yeah. and some other people in Portuguese, of course, but maybe you'll find a way to translate it to your yeah. language. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, also, I have some authoral songs, and you can find it on my Spotify. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, we'll, I, we'll put the link in the show notes. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I recorded during the pandemic. So, yeah. Ah, incredible. Well, you're. I think you're on your way. I think just sing. <laughs> sing your song <laughs> you thank you combine, that's lovely combine the music and the and the asana mm. together yeah mm. i'm looking forward to to study with you in the future harmony so if you come to mallorca i'll be your oh, student okay. number one oh, <laughs> okay <sure. laughs> student number one <laughs> beautiful thank you so much thank you Thanks for listening to this episode of Finding Harmony. With me, your host, Harmony Slater. You can find out more information on my website, harmonyslater.com. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Standing in eternity's shadow Watching the breaking waves there's a hard wind and the soil is dry.